Mars, the planet of war, conflict, and aggression, but also the ability to separate things out, to take action and make decisions, is moving into the Earth sign of Taurus on June the 9th, and will be there all the way through till July the 20th. This is going to be a very important story regarding situations in the Middle East, but in your own life, it's where you're going to bulldoze through something with a kind of headstrong, bull-like perseverance and get shit done, but you're doing it the way a Taurus bull would do or the way a Martian bulldozer would do. Steady, perseverant application of effort, energy, direction, and drive. We're going to talk about how this looks for you in your natal chart during this June to July window, June 9th to July 20th. And I want you to know something about this cycle. It's every two years. Every two years since you were born, Mars will spend approximately six weeks in Taurus and you will get this energy back again and again. And there is one house in your chart that is Taurus, whole sign house system, and it means in your marriage, in your home, in your career. I'll be delineating that for your sign so you can understand how to use this energy and how to watch out for the pitfalls of Mars in a sign where he's trying very hard to work with the tenets of the goddess of love, the goddess of peace, and the goddess of beauty when the guy is actually really a warrior. Now, before we talk about that, personal stuff. I also do bring mundane astrology in. So that will be some world events because Mars squaring Pluto, Mars conjunct Pluto, Mars opposite Pluto is a cycle that is often connected to conflict and war. And it is a Mars Pluto cycle that has to do with the Israel Hamas war situation. And we have to address that because and begins to make angles to both Pluto in Aquarius, a square and the asteroid Apollo for world leaders in Leo and Volcano for explosive events in world leader sign Leo. We're going to see some intense energies playing out, especially in the beginning of June, around June the 9th, add a few days when Mars is in that square to Pluto, retrograde in Aquarius. It's an intense time, guys. So we will do the world astrology as well. And I'm not going to talk about this much today, but we're all hunkered down with our nails, like biting our nails as astrologers. We are indeed for the July 15th conjunction of Uranus and Mars on the very difficult fixed star Algol. So there's a lot going on with this Mars transit that can leave a lot to be desired in the collective, but for your own life, it's never that bad. For example, it was a Mars and Taurus story that led to the insurrection day on the Capitol Hill of the United States. So we'll talk about how Mars can misbehave and behave well in Taurus. So first of all, if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Lori Lothian. I'm using the Western Tropical Zodiac, the whole sign house system. I love the fixed stars and the minor asteroids. You get a lot of that content here. And we're going to be talking about minor asteroids, Apollo today, as well as Transneptunian Volcano in the mix early on as Mars ingresses into the story of his journey through Taurus. I also encourage you to check out my newsletter and it's a free weekly subscription called Cosmic Moonshine. I urge you to check out my Patreon community where they're getting early access ad-free content. I'm recording this March, May 11th. When I talk about world events, I will not be able to say anything that's timely at the time of this recording because I'm off to Portugal for the El Camino, but I'm doing my best guesstimate based on what's going on as of the time of recording, Saturday, May the 11th, 2024. One of the things I'm going to show you the chart that I want to remind you of is called the synodic cycles or the, well, there's synodic cycles. That's the Mars-Pluto cycle we're going to talk about. And then there's just the rhythm of a planet moving through signs. And so Mars takes two years to go around the zodiac, right, from our perspective on Earth. So it takes him two years to go through each sign in the heavens. And he's in each sign for approximately six weeks. So I want you to go back in time. And I want you to remember the dates, get a pen, get a paper, you know, do the whole thing because you can actually compare notes. What was it like from your perspective based on your rising sign, most accurate sun for career and purpose matters, moon for body and home matters, but rising sign all about you. What was it like when this happened before? Now it's never exactly the same, right? Because now we have Uranus and Neptune and Pluto in different places, and we have other forces in different places, Saturn and Pisces. So nothing's ever rinse, repeat perfectly. But still, you can look back and compare notes to how your life felt when Mercury, Mars went through Taurus in the past. So here are your dates. Get your pen and paper handy. I wrote them down for us today, being as I am a, a, a cycle, a lover of repeating cycles and watching them play out and understanding how to use them. 
So here we go. Ready? Back in July 5th of 2022 to August 20th of 2022, we had Mars moving through Taurus. You might remember there was a big kaboom where he conjuncted Uranus and the North Node around the middle of August that year, or the end of August, I should say. No, the beginning of August that year. So July 5th to August 30th in 2022. The next cycle was January the 6th, 2021 to March the 3rd, 2021. Again, January 6, 21 to March 3rd of 2021. And then he also went through Taurus. Oops, did I miss somebody? Oh, way back. Okay, I, I, I'm out of order. You can go way back. Oh, I am going backwards in time to February 14th, 2019 to March 31st, 2019. I'm going only that far. Okay, so February of 19 to March of 31st of 2019, January 6th of 2021 to March 3rd of 2021, and July 5th of 2022 to August 20th of 2022. Now, I'm going to tell you how to use the cycle based on my own example, because I can know me the best. I'm an Aquarius rising. That makes Taurus my fourth whole sign house of home, property, land, real estate, and matters to do with where I live and what I do and what the house that I live in. Now, I do like Mars for the idea of bulldozer and perseverance and staying power when he's in Taurus, right? But he's also a, the uh, god of separation and cutting things away, also conflict, you know, so he's not, he's a malefic and he's in a sign of his exile or detriment in the house that belongs to Venus rather than his home kingdom of Scorpio across the way. So he's not always acting up to his best potential. So I'll give you my story and then you can go back and compare yours, Right. And I could have gone further back in time, but we'd be here all day. If I go back to February of 2019 to March of 2019, my fourth house, Mars, I was moving my furniture across the country so that I could settle myself down in my new home in Montreal. So I was nesting in my fourth house and Mars is a god of like trucks and drivers and, and getting things shipped and moving things around. And there was this desire to have a a moving van, move my stuff from Vancouver to Montreal across the entire country. That was expensive as hell. Remind me never to do that again. I'll buy new furniture. So again, Mars is saying, let's move all your furniture and let's nest in Montreal. And I had it stored in Vancouver. And of course, he's at a detriment. So I could have made a wiser decision. He's in detriment. I could have gone like, ah, maybe not. Maybe just buy some furniture. And then maybe I'll sell my furniture in Montreal in Vancouver later, something like that. Then in January of 2021, the 6th to March 3rd of 2021, I went apartment hunting. <laughs> I was living in Montreal and I had this idea that I wanted a penthouse with a view and I didn't want to be living where I was anymore. And all the energy of January 6th of 21 to March 3rd of 21 is me trying to figure out where to live next. And because there was construction going on in the unit above my head, an attic unit was being renovated by my landlord. I lived in this beautiful old mansion building, you know, on St. Antoine. And um, there was only like six units in the building and I was one down from the attic. And all I could hear was jackhammering and like plaster falling and grinding of plumbing equipment and moving of heavy equipment. And so I was noxiously not enjoying Mars construction energy in the fourth house Taurus of home, January 6th to 21. And they started that construction in January to March 3rd to 21. So I went apartment hunting. So two things happened. Noxious construction in the home, Mars in the fourth house. Out of, out of dignity. And I'm looking for an apartment and it didn't pan out. Like I, I, I almost went, went and doubled my rent in order to have escape from the sound at a fancy penthouse. I was even lining up my references and stuff and I didn't go for it. So it was all for naught. So again, Mars here, not in his best condition, a lot of much to do about nothing, but I was also working hard from home. And then July the 5th of 2022 to August 20th of 2022, another misfire. I almost decided to move back to Ontario from Vancouver. Now I'm in Vancouver, Canada. I went to visit my sister. I had a misfired romance. Okay. Venus is signed, Taurus is romantic love, Mars is traveling or journeying close to home, fourth house represents your childhood. I went back to my childhood areas of my life in Ontario and had a misfired romance with a man who was the widower of my best friend of 40 years. And it, like, 
I'm telling you, it wasn't even, it didn't even get off the ground. But th- at the same time, I'm thinking, oh, I think I should move back to Ontario, be close to my sister. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm going to tell you the truth, guys. I don't like when Mars goes through Taurus for me. I find that things are not all they should be. They're not all chalked up to be as good as they could be. So I'm giving you a warning when a planet is in its detriment. Yes, sometimes the results are good, not great, not great, or just somehow miss the mark, somehow miss the mark. Well, now you do that for your chart when we do the all signs, because I'll say like, if you're, you know, an Aries rising, it's in your second house of money and earnings, you know, and I'll be delineating these times you can compare them to. All right. That's number one. Maybe if I, I have terrible handwriting, but for some of you want to try to screenshot this baby, I'll give me my best shot. This is like my very bad, you know, very bad. Oh my God. See, the dates are there. Maybe you can use that. Uh, to a very bad screenshot. <laughs> okay. And you can keep that little cheat sheet handy. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is synodic cycles with Mars and Pluto. They're often connected to violence, shooters, bombs, war, destruction, dark, hard, difficult storylines to do with dark, hard Martian narratives. I don't want to make Mars the bad guy all the time, but he does represent the god of war who is Aries or Aries, and he is the emissary near Gaul in Babylonian astrology, the god of war and plague. So Mars can do a lot of damage in the game of life in which we want everything to be wonderful, but let's forget, let's not forget what goes up comes down. When good things happen, bad times follow. When bad times happen, good times follow. And that's the rhythmic dual nature, polar, polarized nature of the world. So in that sense, when Mars comes along, he separates and cuts. And when Venus comes along, she unites and joins. And therefore, that's the two natures of the cosmic lovers. And that we need both sides for life to unfold. That's the way this universe is constructed in this particular simulation. So when Mars is moving through Taurus, yes, that's a debility. We talked about the repeat cycles. But what about Mars when he comes into a square relationship, an opposition relationship, or a conjunction to Pluto, knowing that Pluto can bring quite the death, rebirth, uh, crisis, conflict, darker sides of life? Well, I want to compare notes because I created a little cheat sheet for myself for the last cycle. Because right now, as Mars moves into the sign of Taurus, he'll square Pluto at the early degrees of Aquarius on fixed star Altair with asteroid America. Well, war star and asteroid America, it's intense. But it's not the first thing. It's a big, it's a second act in a, in a four-part story because it's coming off the conjunction on February 14th, Valentine's Day of 2024, in which Mars and Pluto co-joined at zero degrees of Aquarius. And this opening first quarter square is happening to follow up that act. It's part two of an ongoing story. So with, with this energy, we have to connect the dots. And we'll do that when we talk about it in a minute. But things that happen with Mars Pluto, 14 degrees in the world, by February 14th, Mars Pluto at zero Aquarius are going to be coming back again for another address. Now, uh, before we go ahead and look at this cycle, let's look at the last cycle, okay? Mars and Pluto came together in the sky on March 3rd, 2022. And they came together at 27 degrees of Capricorn. And that's a cycle from March the 3rd, 2022, that is finishing on February 14th, 2024. So from March of 22 to February 24, we had, of course, the war in Ukraine starting up. So we have the Ukraine war story. There's that. And I'm not going to go back and cover that now. I know there's still a war there, but of course, the one that's uh, capturing the attention of the world is the one in the Middle East. But you're probably thinking, well, there was no Middle East war then, right? Nothing was happening. Well, I really want you to ponder some of the things I'm about to tell you, because the seeds of the war that we're now experiencing are connected to the October the 9th, Mars, last quarter square of Pluto, all right. And that was October the 9th from what started or what was seeded on March the 3rd, because on October 9th, two days after Hamas attacked Israel, we were in a global conflagration. That's what it's becoming. But it was a, a first a localized war. Let's go back and look at it again. I'm going to try to keep this nice and slow for you guys who like the astrology of history. 
March the 3rd, 2022. What happened in the Middle East regarding the Palestine conflict with its neighbors, in this case, particularly the West Bank or Gaza? Okay. Did anything happen in March of 2022 that's absolutely worth talking about? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to read to you from my notes back in the back end of my storyline here, what was going on. So this happened, this conjunction, March 3rd to 22. You don't look for the exact date. It's a new cycle that goes from March of 22 to July 2nd of 22. From the conjunction of Pluto and Mars at 27 Capricorn to the next thing, the opening square on July 2nd of Mars to Pluto, first quarter square. So what happened back then is a big deal. It happened in middle of April of 2022, and Israeli forces injured 20, 14 Palestinian protesters after thousands of Israeli Jewish settlers marched into the evacuated settlement outpost of Hamesh near Nablus in the occupied West Bank. Thousands of them took buses in. They were supported by the IDF soldiers to do this, which is illegal. And in this place, Hamesh, there is nothing. It used to be a military base. It's private land owned by Palestinian people and actually has like deeds to it. And the Israel in 2000 and maybe 13 built a religious school on this land. And as part of a statement about, of course, settlers in the West Bank, they tend to be militant because they believe that this is Abraham's promise to them. Judea and Samaria are wanting to occupy and take back the land that maybe their historical ancestors did or did not have. So basically it was a big deal march. It was, um, really over the top. It was something hadn't been seen. Israeli forces were firing rubber-coated bullets and tear gas at the Palestinians that protested the settlers marching across their land, taking massive buses across their land, okay? And Israeli army said it would protect the settlers doing this initiation, not the Palestinian peoples on whom, whom's, on whom's, on whose land was being invaded basically by the settlers. Now, 70 buses carry thousands of families registered for this event, and several Knesset members of the Israeli government joined in. So I'm only telling you that this was a dangerous provocation. This march was a provocation of the Palestinian peoples in occupied territory that is illegal, and it was to strengthen their, exp their presence in the West Bank. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope you guys understand what I'm telling you. This was a really big event at the time. Nothing like this had happened before. This is March of 22's conjunction at 27 Capricorn. Capricorn is top-down power structures that was happening back then when Pluto and Mars came together. Now we move to July the 2nd. Now we're in the opening first quarter square, just like a first half moon. And this is now July 2nd of 2022. Mars is in war sign Aries, squaring Pluto in Capricorn. What happened? The United Nations released a report. Now it's all got to be tied to the settler West Bank theme for this to make any sense. I'm sure there were things going on in Gaza, but I, I'm going with the easiest pieces of information. On July 22nd, a couple of weeks after, Mars squares Pluto. There is a big, no, not United Nations, I apologize, foundation. It made the air, it made the headlines. Okay. That's how I could find it. The Foundation for Middle East Peace had an ex, a report issued on July the 21st, 2022. The entire report is filled with examples of the settlers coming in to the areas that they're not supposed to be, grabbing land, attacking other, attacking the Palestinian people, etc. Uh, illegal outposts, um, etc. There's also disclosure stories about Jewish settlers raising millions of dollars to set up illegal outposts that were breaking and included in this report. Now, the IDF and Gantz, who's a politician in Israel, did warn settler activists were doing illegal things at the time. So there was this energy of what thou doth protest, okay? But there was a long report about what was going on. I'm just reading some of the elements of it. So settlers break into Palestine land west of Ramallah to set up a colonial outpost. 
That's one of the stories, okay? Settlers declare six new outposts and clash with authorities. Thousands of Jewish activists flock to the West Bank to build outposts. Thousands of settler activists create mayhem in the West Bank. Settlers camp out in six locations across the West Bank. Please gear up for clashes as settler groups try to set up illegal outposts. What I'm trying to tell you, there was a major escalation of illegal outposts in the West Bank at the time. We're talking about the first quarter square of July of 22. On March 21st, 2000 of 23, we now have the opposition as Mars is moving through Leo and now Pluto has moved into Aquarius, not Capricorn, and they're opposite each other. And what story happened in Israel at the time was the following. There is that at this point, the United States objecting. United States says it is extremely troubled on the opposition of the Mars-Pluto story by new Israeli settlement law. Now, there is a new law passed regarding settlements at this time by the nation of Israel. And the United States has renewed its opposition to settlement policies in the West Bank, okay? So Israel passed a law that paves the way for restoring illegal settlement. settlement. The article says that Israel passes a law in the very traditional right-wing Zionist religious government. It's not a democracy. It's a theocracy and an ethnostate. Just be aware. They passed a law that it is a Jewish state. So if you're not Jewish, you're like a second-class citizen. That was passed, I think, in 2018. So basically, Israel passed a law that paves the way for the restoring of illegal settlements in the north of the occupied West Bank which is against the in United Nations many different um what do you call them Amem not amendments but when they they pass a resolution as well as US policy at large so what i'm trying to point out is this increasing escalation of the west bank settler violence and territorial grabs that began to happen starting in march of 22 escalating in july of 22 and the united states saying oh no but the government's passed a law saying let's settle the north of god north settlements in the west bank march 21st of 23 so it's getting way way more intense, where the United States is strongly urging Israel to refrain from returning settlers to the area, parts of which are privately owned land by Palestinian people. That's where this was going. And then what happens, guys, on October 9th, with the last quarter square of Mars from the sign of Libra on the ascendant of Israel with the south node where eclipses are happening, squaring Pluto in the sign of Aquarius. When we started this with settler West Bank problems, Hamas attacks Israel. And there was all the chatter that Israel had moved a lot of its military force away from the Gaza border to the West Bank during this time, whether that's true, I don't remember. But we have the similar stories of occupied Palestinians. This is from Gaza and the condition that Israel has with the occupied territories, yet again in the narrative, October 9th, 2023, and the eclipse that happened as well in Libra in October, right on the ascendant of Israel at 21 degrees of Libra. Israel's ascendant, if I remember correctly, is 21 or 23, is about why we're in this particular Middle East problem. So when October 9th, 2023, Mars squares Pluto from the ascendant degrees uh, or the ascendant place of Israel, <laughs> we begin to see a war, already a, a big, big, big war in the Middle East. Now, Mars is a malefic and in Libra, he's in his detriment. When he made that square October 9th, it included the Hamas uh, attack and the subsequent Iron Swords ma massacre war that's ongoing. Mars didn't start this from a strength a place of strength, but a place of weakness. And that is what I'm trying to get across. Mars could be the noble warrior, the fireman, the hero saving somebody, uh, going in to rescue them, an EMT hero. Mars can be also in detriment and not at his best game. This whole thing started in October with that Mars-Pluto square, and Mars was not in good shape. And therefore, this is worrisome. 
And this can mean that the beginning of this war was started by a Mars who was not doing uh, what Mars can do, but what Mars did do, you know, and justice and uh, scales of justice, Libra, not just peace treaties, but like Mott, the scales of cosmic justice, divine justice are embedded within the Libran scales. So we shall see where this story goes, right? We shall see. Now, I'm going to also tell you something else. I'm going to reduce my screen. I'm not looking at you guys. I want you to know that if Israel is a Libra rising, which it is based on its 1948 uh, inception chart, and that's a part of its narrative, right? To be embedded in the Libra story. Oh, did I say Pluto and Aquarius? I'm sorry, Pluto and Capricorn. So <laughs> Mars and Libra, Pluto and Capricorn was the square. Where is Capricorn in the nation of Israel's chart? If Mars is in Libra, the ascendant of Israel, Capricorn is its fourth house of property, home, and homeland. So Mars began a war for homeland turf. And that is unfortunate because of his lack of dignity and the involvement with the south node of loss, the eclipse. But there's a deep wisdom in that south node. There's a sense that we're going to learn about cosmic and karmic justice. And I remember when the war first broke out, my words that I heard in my head is the words impunity ends. Impunity for whom? For the nation of Israel in the 70-year occupation and repression of the Palestinian people. Yes, I am seeing it that way. So if you don't like that, you don't need to listen to this channel. If that's how you see the situation, then it's fine. Don't comment if you are a Zionist. Why bother? You're obviously not preaching to the choir, but to the person who's done some historical research. So why I wanted to bring this up today and talk about that before we do your sign, because I really do like this kind of astrology that looks at historical trends, right, is on February 14th. 2024, Mars co-joined with Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius. I'm going to show you the sky. Let me grab it. And that is on fixed star Altair, the eye of the eagle. Of course, the eagle is a symbol for the United States. And it's about military success and conquest and playing to win and all the brutality of war. But that star Altair is also sitting in the sky as we speak with asteroid America and Pluto. So we're going to talk about what this might mean as Mars bumbles his way like a bulldozer through Taurus yet again in his Taurus cycle and what that might mean for the nation of Israel. I hear some questions in my inner ear and people are saying, well, what does that mean for Israel? What is the Taurus part of the Israel's natal sky? Because that's a great question. And the Taurus part is the eighth house of death. You can take death any which way. The eighth house can be the macro economy of Israel connected to matters to do, for instance, with uh, the stock markets, the equity markets, but it is also literally called the house of death for a reason. So this is not auspicious at all, obviously. And so we could consider that. Let's talk about this synodic cycle and then do your sign. And when we talk about Mars for you guys, um, I'm going to be bringing up how there's a beautiful energy in the sky. Why, why, why focus on the negative? I'll be doing my own video for the week of, you know, June the 9th. And I'll talk about that Mars Pluto square for you. But I will be bringing in this mystic rectangle that forms in the sky, which are, is a very soft, beautiful energy, uh, bringing uh, good things, lemons from lemonade. I mean, lemonade from lemons, and that's on July 6th. And the mystic rectangle has Saturn and Mars and the asteroids Juno and Athena, and it's almost a perfect mystic rectangle. And so that's what I'll be focusing on a little bit in our all signs section. Now that rectangle has a lot of depth to it. So I'm just going to say you're making easy things happen and solutions come through your sky, particularly where Mars is sitting, the faster moving and more traditional planet. And it, it, it ricochets to the Athena, Juno, Saturn places of your chart. And you'll see the mystic rectangle in the sky when I show you the sky. So let me grab the chart, pull it up. We're going to look at it. And I want to talk about what happened February 14th, 2024, Mars Pluto conjunction at zero Aquarius. And it comes to Middle East stories. Now I know something might've happened in China. China is an Aquarius rising. So someone else, please tell me what happened February 14th regarding China, because China is doing a European world tour to drum up Hungary and Serbia and even France and complicit, you know, economic trade, etc. And of course, Serbia and Hungary are biting. And let's face it, they want a multipolar world, not a hegemic world. And what we're seeing is uh, 
China's ascendancy because Pluto is going through the first house of China and it's going to dominate the world over the next 20 years. But we're seeing maybe in February 14, 24, some China stories as Mars Pluto conjoined at zero Aquarius, as well as Middle East stories to do with the nation of Israel. So I will look at that as well. In Israel's natal chart, for example, and I don't have a chart for Palestine because it is not a nation. Um, in the Aquarian part of the sky for the nation of Israel is its fifth house. And that has a lot to do with where um, you have entertainment, where you have uh, joy and fun and play and pleasure matters, you know, as a person. Funny and not funny. I mean, it's pretty de 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 devastating, but one of the big things that Hamas did was go into a rave of young people partying into the wee hours, you know, concert rave outdoor. And um, that would be a fifth house type of event, right? But we're also talking about the fact that October 9th, 2024, Mars squared Pluto in Capricorn and, and, and in the sign of Libra. So it's a different narrative. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take the chart and we're going to talk about February the 14th. What a Valentine's Day it was, guys. So I'm going to be very literal because on February 14th, there were certain specific things that happened. Now, one of them was the uh, ordering of the evacuation of the Nasser Hospital, as well as evidence that snipers killed civilians and doctors fleeing the Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunus. And, that, and maybe we can see that what will happen as June 9th through to like the 12th, especially on the 11th, it's more exact. We'll see something like a Rafa hospital being ordered to evacuate. There's only like two hospitals left that functional in Gaza. And that could be a, a, like another like <clears throat> limb of the story that began on February 14th. Um, Khan Yunus hospital evacuated, uh, doctors and people shot, yada, yada, you know, the whole story. Right now we've got mass graves outside of these hospitals, et cetera. So we got that story going up. I think the more important story that happened on February 14th that you cannot believe is the following headline on February 14th, 2024. This is a CNN headline. It's making headlines all over the news at the time. And the headline is Netanyahu vows powerful action in Rafa while the idea IDF hits Hezbollah. And his words back then were, he said, <clears throat> he reiterated his intention to order concerted military operations in Rafah, vowing his country will fight until absolute victory. And this was actually had a lot of blowback in, in February when he came out with this announcement they were going to do concerted military action in the South, on, in Rafah, because then you had the United Nations, the United States all saying, no, 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 bad idea. You can't go for that. Like, you know, you can't do that. That's going to be horrible. And um, so we see the first time that basically Netanyahu declared that Rafah was not a safe zone after all, after pressuring 1.5 million people into this small bit of land, you know, Gaza is 12 miles long and roughly, I mean, 25 miles long and 12 miles wide. I mean, and you've got all these people crammed into the very, very border with Egypt. All righty. And with a sniper story, February 14th, the headline is Israeli snipers shoot and kill civilians as they flee the hospital in Gaza, according to eyewitnesses. And doctors were giving testimony about what happened. And the IDF have ordered hospital staff and patients inside the medical complex to evacuate. Okay, now I have to tell you, I watched people's evacuation stories and they were being bombed and shot at on the evacuation route out of Khan Yunus. Alrighty, so... Yeah, no. Israeli, Israel has previously said it does not target forces, uh, civilian targets, but we've seen otherwise. And doctors with borders on February 14th condemned Israel's evacuation for Gaza's Nasser, Nasser Hospital. Now, you can expect this to repeat. This is what the story is. It's the first opening square. We'll have more iterations from Netanyahu about concerted effort in, in Rafah. I'm recording this on May the 11th. They're already in Rafah. So I have no idea where this next level of atrocity can go. <laughs> but it has to do with Rafah, the last bastion, the last hospitals, things like that. Okay. So that's June 11th. And that's the story. And then if you want to track this for your own life, I want you to get your pen and paper handy. I don't have this written down in a tidy way. So when we see February 14th, 24, Mars Pluto conjunction in your chart, you can also track June 11th, which is Mars um, in Taurus square Pluto, and November 3rd of 2024, Mars in um, 
Mars opposite Pluto, and this will be Mars in uh, Cancer opposite Pluto at 29 Cap because we're back to Pluto has moved backwards into the last degree of Capricorn. And September 24th of 2025, we have the, the last quarter square, which is what is equivalent to what happened in the Hamas attack. It was the last quarter square of the last cycle. Sometimes the last quarter square is the most intense, I find. The last quarter square, the last salvo is September 24th, and Mars will be in the sign of Scorpio. It's home kingdom squaring Pluto in early Aquarius. And then we're going to have a new cycle beginning January of 2026. Alrighty. Let's take us over to the chart. Now, if you were bored by that, I apologize, but you guys know I have timestamps and chapters and you can jump ahead. This is a timestamping nightmare for my sister that she has to go through all this intro before we get to the all signs, but shall we? I'm going to not go through all of the details of <laughs> these sky stories because I will do them on my Monday video. So if you like and subscribe, you'll be able to access my Monday video and watch it play out in like football real time. So for example, on June 9th, you see Mars is ingressed into the sign of Taurus, and he is going to be connecting to a retrograde Pluto and most exact on June 11th. And so by the time we get to June 11th, 12th, we have this pretty uh, tight 10th, 11th, 12th, uh, energy, 10th, 11th, it's almost midnight here in Montreal on the Montreal chart. I'm not in Montreal anymore, but yeah. So, you know, the thing that concerns me is Altair, the war star. Also, U.S. asteroid for USA is there, America. But also the fact that this across the way is Volcano. Now, Volcano is the ugly husband of Venus, but this is a trans-Neptunian and it's associated with brute force. Okay, brutality and brute force and ex brutality, brute force and explosive events. Okay, it's a transient between the Iranian planet and it's connected to Apollo, which represents world leaders or Apollo sun god figures. And there is a, a intensity here of a, a T square forming in the sky around a, a brute force, world leaders. Death America. Okay, just some thoughts, right? In Israel's chart, this part of the sky that represents Leo, by the way, Leo is Iran, the open enemy of Israel. And also this is China over here. Ascendant is an Aquarius. So Iran, China stories and bombs, weapons, shootings, and missiles could come into the story play place. Um now, when we talk about Volcanus being brute force and, vol, vol, you know, he's also Hephaestus, same guy, Volcanus and Hephaestus is the husband of Zeus. And what is he known for? The armor of Zeus. He created the thunderbolts of Zeus. And therefore, this is also representative of flying weapons that cause great damage. So flying weapons that cause great damage. They cause mayhem, cat catastrophic death and rebirth energies. I don't think it's China. I don't think China's throwing missiles around. We could go with Iran. Right, who's got you know probably a vengeance vow going? I uh, definitely could go with that. Um, and the natal chart of Israel, Mars has just left the house of open enemies and moved into the house of death and destruction. I'm going to tell you guys, there's something I'm recording this way ahead of time, but I'm going to say something like this. <sighs> As I record this on May 11th, I'm going to suspect that around June the 10th, we're going to see some kind of atrocious event regarding war. This can look like missiles. This can look like bombs. This can look like um, invasions. It can look like massacres. And it's going to involve maybe perhaps the Leo ascendant areas of reality, which is the ascendant of Iran and the house of death in the nation of Israel, yet complicit or somehow involved maybe America with the asteroid America conjunct the Pluto part of the story. So Pluto, square Mars, Pluto opposite the armor of the gods, the thunderbolts of Zeus looks daunting and it looks like a major world event. In other times and places, we could even look at terrorist events, but now we're looking at something to do with war. So that's my statement and I'm going to stick with it. And I'm recording this a month before whatever happens will happen. We're going to do your all signs next. Don't forget, your rising sign is probably the most important. Then you can listen for your sun and moon. And we're jumping to the happy mystic rectangle in the sky because for the most part, you know, July 15th, Mars on Algol, on Uranus, eeks. 
that's going to be intense. And there's also the Apollo, the sun god in, on Elgol with the Mars, you know, Uranus conjunction. It looks really difficult. A decapitation of a world leader, not literally beheaded, but losing their head or maybe having to step down from being the head of power would be a July 15th story. That would be the most easy version of that. Um, and then on, you know, around June the 28th, uh, Mars will sextile Mercury and Venus on June 21st. So Mercury, Venus are getting some flow from the God of War in the sign that belongs to Venus. And I would say perhaps June 28th looks like an attempt to resolve whatever that calamitous, horrible event was by creating peace events and peace treaties on June 28th, beginning June 21st to 28th, for whatever fucking befell the world around June the 9th to the 12th with the Mars square Pluto. I hope it's not as bad as I think it is. Because honestly, I don't have a good feeling about this. And I'm not a doomsayer by nature. I, you know, people don't know that about me, but I, I'm more of a predictor than a doomsayer. My doomsaying it doesn't make me happy in any particular way. Okay, so let's start with the Aries. Let me take a drink of water. Hang on. I'll be teaching my Sky Reader course coming up in September. Be your own astrologer, Tom, your best life. I love this class. It'll be my fifth time teaching it. Come jump aboard. Check the description box below for how to get your early bird discount notice and even to get in the class. I can't do a thousand people. I will have an assistant, but you know there will be limits on how many students can join. And it's six weeks long and it helps you look at the basics of your chart and time your best life. And that information is in the description box. You get on the early bird notice wait list. All right. All right. So let's start off with the Aries folk. I am one of you. Hit my sun and moon. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the no notification bell and help support the thrival of the channel so that I also can thrive. Such an easy thing, you know, you want to do it, right? Push the like button. So here we have Aries. Um, we're easily engaged with the themes of aggression and war because Mars is our ruler. And, and sometimes people wonder why I'm obsessed with wars and content about that on my channel. Well, I have an Aries sun, moon, and Mercury and Athena. So I'm very driven by the Aries story. So as we look at this narrative of Mars moving into the sign of Taurus, where he's not in his best comfort zone, he will be also creating a flowing mystic rectangle on the date of, oh, I forgot to put that in for us. I will do that now on the date of July the 6th. So let's just jump ahead to the happier stories that we can see in the sky. Sorry, guys, are you dizzy yet? I am. Here we go. Mystic rectangle, right? So easy to see. It's formed by Mars at 20, Saturn at 19, Athena, goddess of strategy and wisdom and knowledge at 19, and Juno, contracts, agreements, and marriages, and money, moneta, at 19. Now, this is a mystic rectangle. So Aries, there's something going on in your life around June 6th. Maybe give it, oh, about a week, five or six days before and after. I'd say five or six days before and after where something really good is trying to happen. And what really good is trying to happen has to do with most most predominantly your money, right? Mars is in your earnings and money house. He's the one forming this because he's a, um, a solid planet, not an asteroid, and he's moving faster than Saturn. So he's the maker of the story. And he's going to make a story about better financial outcomes, whether it has to do with spending or savings, and he's a self-starter in your second house. He wants to be more entrepreneurial. And in this place, he's giving you some exciting, exciting Iranian sudden opportunities for greater financial gain. But he's also going to say it also makes a sweet nectar out of challenges you've had. And you want to look to the idea that some of the challenges have been with taxes, the opposite place where Mars is. Taxes shared resources with a partner, inheritance monies, investment monies are smoothing out for you. And also you can see that Mars is flowing to Juno in the house of work and, and work events. And so partnerships in business and work or even work opportunities that involve vows or agreements are smoothing out. And he's also talking to Saturn in the house of income and revenue from far off foreign shores and lands. Anyone here who's listening, who's had a challenge re regarding addiction, self undoing, habits and patterns, especially things you eat and put in your mouth, a sudden freedom can emerge from that pattern of addictive substance use around July the 6th, a few days before and after. 
And it could open up opportunities, not only for work for new rental agreements and rental properties, it also just flows to Athena. And there's something about anything to do with mortgages and legal contracts, because she's very lawyerly at times, do tend to really work out for you in the month of July. Certainly, as he flows to series in the 10th house, there's some changes in your career as he holds fort in this mystic rectangle because you're par pairing away or changing some career measures in order to streamline finances, create greater wealth in your life, find a real connection to your work, a partnership to your work, or even to a new partner in work. And a lot of you can also let go of those addictions and self undoing bad habits as well. Uh oh. Hang on. <laughs> I need to change the chart. I do this every time. I know you guys know I do this every time to whole sign houses so I can rotate the sky. I'm telling you, I've been doing the wine lovers middle way. And I'm in where in the month of May, not drinking wine on the daily. But it's days like this where I want a glass of wine. I saw two clients. I recorded another video and I'll my next one. And the reason, and I had a, a Zoom meeting because I'm going away to the El Camino and I have woe is me. And I need to pre-record June's content while I'm still making Mays. It's like a lot, guys. Someone send me love and hugs. Someone, any Reiki healers out there who are hearing me right now, um, whenever you hear this, I'm sure I'm recovered because you're going to get this later, but I'm always welcoming. I'm always welcoming of Reiki healers sending love. Okay. I think it's an amazing, amazing healing modality. My sister Nancy, healing with Nancy Lynn is amazing. Sorry, I don't digress. I'm just chattering away as I cue the chart. <clears throat> I apologize for the chatter away as I cue the chart. There we go. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. Let's go. Number one, where is it happening? Mars is in the house of you. So it's all about your body, if you're rising signs, about your career and your purpose, if it's your son, it could be about your father, father figures and their challenges to their health or mother, mother figures, if it's your moon, son is father figures, but your moon, it could be your home and nest needs and also your body. Okay, got it? Now, I always suggest listen to your rising. This is a Mars with some surprises up his sleeve and a rebellious freedom loving streak as he comes to Uranus. And he is in a beautiful mystic rectangle making lemonade from lemons. And it's where you are going to come into a nice flow with regards to your relationship to your romantic love partner, maybe a deepening of commitment, especially with Athena, even making a long term relationship in marriage and love very, very solid, like a proposal or decision to move in and commit together. This also flows to the house of children if you have them. It's it allows for some really positive agreements with your children, some commitments they can make to you or vice versa. And you see that Saturn in the corner of the mystic rectangle offers up a kind of bonus points on the game board regarding matters of career gains. And you may see some improvement in your financial gains from whatever career path you are on during this time. You know, Mars is opposite Athena and that's where there's been challenges to be strategic in your significant committed love or the approach to your audience and marketplace. And now it's all the tension of opposites are being bound together. The tension between Saturn Saturn and Juno is to stay or go in a committed love story. And you're binding that tension of opposites to find a resolution to stay or go in that committed love story, that legal contract or obligation, or even in that way that you approach your own children. Maybe it's time to cut them loose, you think, or should I hang in there and be a dedicated partner to my own kids? A lot of Tauruses are thinking about these questions and resolving them beautifully. July 5th, 6th, a few days before and after. Blessed mystic rectangle for you. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. Bring me a glass of crisp, bubbly rosé <laughs> on my sunny deck so I can decompress. Gemini, I have a progressed sun. I'm relating to you in Gemini. Gemini. So here we have this energy of Mars, the fastest moving real planet, forming a mystic rectangle to Saturn in your 10th house. This is definitely going to bring some positive things to do with your 
um, your long-term career success and masterful goals and anything to do with backroom deals and negotiations and importantly, revenue you can generate internationally if that's your cup of tea. At the same time, Mars is opposite, of course, in this rectangle, Athena, who's trying to be ever so strategic around matters to do with your work routines, health routines, and anything to do with self-undoing and cutting the damn thing out. But Athena can be very legally, so contracts regarding work and contracts regarding rental properties are forming with this Juno in the fourth house energy. Looks like a lot of you in the first week of July may be looking at rental contracts and agreements or buying and selling agreements around property and real estate. If you're renting a place, it goes smoothly. If you're buying a place, it goes well legally. And you may also be looking at an ease around mortgages and banks at this time. Because the Mystic Rectangle does involve a 12th house placement, it's going to be very much about having a sense of inner inner momentum, right? It's more subtle than, than on the surface. And you just may feel like you're driven by unconscious impulses or intuitive unconscious impulses, but in a positive direction. And, you know, Juno's opposite Saturn in the mystic rectangle. And there's been caught maybe an inner conflict going on about obligations and responsibilities in your career and commitments in your home. And you've been trying to find that balance. I can attest to that with my partner, James. I don't feel like I don't have enough time to partner with my partner at home. Right. And so this tension is now being resolved. And finally, it is just a vibe when Juno's in the fourth house of what kind of commitments you would want to make in and from your home or about legal matters regarding property. And those commitments can flow with ease and grace. And even some of you might want to rent a place in a foreign country as a result of this July event. I'm going to be in the El Camino and in Portugal all of June. Maybe I'll fall in love with it enough that I'm going to jump on a rental agreement. You never know. All right, this is the, um, these are the Cancer Rising, Sun and Moon, and you're going to have a mystic rectangle forming in the sky on July the 5th. And I like this N6 and give a few days before and after to feel this resolution and possible lemonade le nectars from lemons, because you've been struggling perhaps with the following conversations. One, Mars is saying the faster moving real planet in Taurus. How is it that I am going to be able to possibly resolve something to do with my children or my entrepreneurial business that has been giving me tension? Now, don't forget, I didn't really cover this, but your 11th house is the house <laughs> of your friends and allies and tensions with those people have been evident. Now, I am covering a mystic rectangle for you today, but I mean... I'll probably do another follow-up video just with the generic, what's it mean when Mars is in Taurus for your sign? So look for that follow-up video as well. I'll probably say Mars through the signs for each sign or something, Mars through Taurus and what it means for your sign. But this is more like I want you to groove with this mystic rectangle. And so where have you been in like a, a tension conversation, right? That can be resolved around July 6th because it looks to me like Athena, the goddess of strategy and wisdom, is applying uh, some solutions here regarding romantic and children tensions, especially to your children. And Mars is like, ooh, we have to have these difficult conversations, but we're going to do it. And it's been hard. Um, it, there may be support here in July from an elder sibling around children tension and financial matters. Now, at the same time, the other tension is Saturn and Juno. Saturn is the Grim Reaper and Juno is the, you know, the committed perseverant goddess who doesn't give up on the, the vows she's made of marriage or any kind of commitment, really. And it's long suffering, perseverant commitment. Um, and Juno opposite Saturn is where have some of you cancers been, been ready to maybe, maybe commit to a younger sibling, maybe commit to a neighborhood project, maybe commit to something to do with your online world. Maybe can it commit to a travel opportunity. It's been playing through your sky for a while. Saturn is like, you know, I've got the strict boss in my ninth house and he's like, you're not going to a foreign land. It's dangerous or, um, or it's an educational opportunity and you've got to push pull about, do you want to go to this higher institution or just a local college? So whatever this tension has been about that can be resolved as well. And certainly with Mars up in your 11th house, there can be some issues with a friend, extended friend or a elder sibling, and they are all now being smoothed over or 
they're embedded in a mystical rectangle that allows for the resolution of the tension of opposites. Holy man. Okay. I'm having a hunger attack and I'm still working away at almost 5 p.m. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pull it off, guys, because if I stop this video and have to record it tomorrow, uh, I'm going to kill myself. <sighs> Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Hey, Leo, <laughs> mystic rectangle land coming off the Mars transit through the sign of Taurus. How are you trying to resolve in a beautiful and, and massively pos positive way some tensions around the money stories? Maybe money between your earnings money or your daily money earnings or possessions and chunky money from shared resources with a partner, inheritances and investments. There's this push-pull going on here, as well as tension between things that are going on in your home and your strategic decisions around your home and opposition to the things that are happening in your career. So career, home and money stories have been tense. Maybe you want to move away from home if you're younger. Maybe you want to forge a new home because this flow between Athena here can open up a opportunity for a contractor agreement, especially around a rental home. And maybe some of you Leos can buy, sell or rent property or make decisions around real estate finances and possessions during the July 5th, a week before and after. And some of you may also be looking at legal advice around land, home and property and long-term uh, solutions regarding loans and mortgages as we approach July the 5th and give it a week before and after. I need chocolate. There's no way I'm going to get through this. I'll be right back. I did it. I ate chocolate. <laughs> It's like, honest to God, I should be a chocolate sponsor because it's what gets me through these long haul videos. Oh my God. I'm going to start vetting chocolatiers. That and water. Okay. Here we go. Dark, dark chocolate, guys. All right. So Virgo, my daughter's one of you, sun, moon, and rising. Come on. There's some something that's coming to a beautiful, sweet spot of the lemonade from the lemons. When you've been struggling with, should I stay or should I go? Or why does this relationship feel hard? Or why is my partner such a hard-ass, melancholic, heavy, responsible person? Or why can't I find love? And so this tension here, you're looking for commitment, you're looking for marriage, you want to, to commit, or you want to separate if you have to. And you've been looking at this story for a while. You want to get married. Yeah, or you want to get divorced. And as a Virgo rising, especially, you've been looking at Saturn across the way, the taskmaster in the house of marriage or relationship, and trying to help you figure it out. And you're figuring it out around July the 5th, 6th, add a few days before and after. Now, honestly, it doesn't have to be legal marriage. It could be going to someone to move in with you or commit to be monogamous or make this the real deal. Or you know it's really struggling and you're having a decision to make about ending it or not. Um uh, this also flows, of course, as a mystic rectangle, and it's binding tensions of opposites. So you're seeing as well Mars opposite in your ninth house of God, foreign land travel, etc. Opposite Athena in the local neighborhood. But you know, honestly, Mars is up in the higher education house. My daughter's been busting her ass finishing her last part of her, her degree. And it's tension there, you know, that's been flowing against the grain of what Athena's doing in your third house. Your third house. It's what you want to do in your daily life. This fishbowl in which you swim, your daily routines. You want to be strategic, wise, and smart about it. It's Athena. But there's so much energy in your ninth house. Because this is happening in July, and you know it is the summer. Most people aren't in school, so I won't do that. You may be trying to figure out something to do with legal matters or foreign shore lands in the month of July. Maybe even a trip, a sweet trip with your significant other. But you're looking also at having to bind the tension of legal op, uh, legalese and strategic things. I honestly have so many lawyer clients or librarians, and they have a strong Athena. You'll learn it in the practice what Athena represents. So, where are you looking at legal matters to do with siblings, short distance travel? skills based education that needs to come into harmony with opportunities in foreign shores and foreign lands, for example. And if you're in the book publishing industry, it looks like you finally get the book deal or the agent of your life dreams or something like that working out for you. Um, there's some shock and surprise when Mars is with Uranus, unexpected, surprising, but positive resolution regarding matters to do with foreign lands and shores as well. 
Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign, what happens is you have a mystic rectangle as Mars moves through Taurus, the house of your chunky money. You know, it's a long transit. I'll be doing another video on the meaning of Mars through your houses and <clears throat> based on your rising sign. But here we have some kind of tension going on in the sky between your, your investment money, your inheritance money, uh, your resources you share with a business or sp partner or spouse, your bank loans and all of that. And it's a sudden, exciting and freedom loving energy opposite Athena in the work a day, earnings, you know, possessions and savings. And this tension between this part of this chart, the eighth house money, which can involve inheritance and your sort of more everyday savings account it has been activated and is being resolved, but also tension between um, contracts and agreements with foreign entities and foreign shore companies or revenues opposite Saturn in the daily workspace. Now I know a Libra who just, his company went bust and it was a foreign country company and he's looking for work as I speak and record this in May. This can be like a resolution of that where there's a beautiful opportunity, not just for employment, but greater gains, you know, like sign on bonuses or ability to buy stock in the company. And also the legalese of signing a new work contract because don't forget the mystic rectangle also involves Athena flowing to a stellium in your 10th house. And to Saturn in your sixth house, which looks like work opportunities and agreements coming into the story. For a lot of you Libras, it looks really, really good on you. However, it may also involve some changes of your home and maybe involving work changes, uh, agreements that have you harvesting uh, or sickling your home for something new, like a, or also new rental agreements and ends of old ones and new ones beginning if you rent a home out or you are a landlord around July 5th, a few days before and after. So to make the good things from the difficult things, this mystic rectangle, Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising shows up telling a story along the lines of July 5th, a few days before and after. Where have you been trying to be more strategic and more wise about your significant marriage partner who may be a little bit aggressive and erratic with the Uranus conjunction here uh, to Mars in the house of your significant other in your life. doesn't have to be legally married. And you are now coming into a resolution of tension here, as well as there has been ongoing tension that needed to be fixed between stodgy Saturn opposite Juno in your 11th house. Now, Juno in the 11th house is very much about um, agreements you're making with larger groups of belonging or to do with your work agreements in your job or career and what Saturn is trying to do in the house of joy, fun, play, and pleasure. And the two of them aren't meeting up. A lot of you uh, Scorpios may find this turning point looking like solidifying strategic choices regarding creativity, entrepreneurship, children, and romance and coming to conclusions where you've been turbulent and challenged in a long-term business or love partnership, but also forming new contracts of agreement in larger groups of belonging, friendship circles, and employment structures. I mean, Athena does have a love affair up here with the Venus um, story, which is also about churches and religious structures. And with the Juno narrative, some of you may be finalizing engagement plans, wedding plans, or marriage plans. Very true for my son is a Scorpio rising, getting married at the end of July. Looks like a rough patch <laughs> coming into the early part of July for my Scorpio rising son, where he and his partner are about to kill each other. But it looks like it smooths out. I should tell him around July 5th or 6th, give or, few, uh, give or take a few days on either side. <laughs> I think I need a masseuse as well. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Guys, I need someone to massage my back while I do these videos and then put chocolate in my mouth while I'm taking a break. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising. Can I just confess a little bit more? I know I'm going to get trolled on this. If I was only doing astrology YouTube videos, I'd be fine. If I was only seeing clients, I would be fine. I'm finding it challenging to teach classes, see clients, and do YouTube astrology videos. It's a one woman, one, it's a one woman show, and it's a, I, I, something's got to get. And I think it's the clients actually. So Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. <sighs> 
We have a mystic rectangle as Mars moves through your for Taurus house of work and health and and pets and tendencies. I don't want to scare you, but yeah, Mars moving through here can mean uh, health challenges or even worse with a pet. So keep that in mind. You go back and track your Taurus your Taurus cycle. Did you lose a pet? And the cycles I gave you at the beginning of the video, as Mars goes through here and with Uranus, it's unpredictable. But let's go back to the basics. Mars is traveling through your sixth house, and it can be about rental opportunities. Many Sagittarius may want to rent out a home if, or become a tenant of a new property. Easily, I can see that in this chart, as well as potentially with the Saturnian flow to Venus in the house of mortgages, purchase or sell a property. And this is very much up in this mystic rectangle around July 5th, a few days before and after. Add to that, that Mars has been having a tension discussion with Athena across the way. It has to do with legal matters and strategic matters to do with foreign shores and lands, Okay. I don't know your story. Are some of you thinking of buying or selling or renting property in a far off place? Maybe. As well, Saturn has been having an opposition to ne uh, Juno. Your marriage partner and your business contracts are in the top of the sky and witnessed by the world. And yet there's hardship, isolation, and difficulty and constriction in the home. Now you're uh, you're kind of trying to bind up this hot mass of tension. I mean, come on, you've had Chiron and the eclipses in your house of romantic love and sexuality. This has been a hard place for you. It looks like you could, especially with Jupiter in seventh, be coming into a time of life where a kind of unfulfilled nature around being home alone and lonely without a marriage partner could lead to a sudden new opportunity to meet somebody that you would like to stay with for a long time. Mars is in a dating house. Uranus is sudden shock and awe around a potential long-term partnership. That said, with Ceres and Juno and Mars here, many of you Sages are looking at financial opportunities through work and career matters and contracts and agreements forming as a result of the mystic rectangle. And it looks good on alleviating what you felt was either alone, lonely, challenged, constricted, or isolated feelings in and from your home. All right. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising. It is a story where you have this transit of Mars in a trine to you, but through your fifth house, he is in debility. This can be conflict with your children or conflict with your lover and romantic partner. For example, not likely to be so bad with the sextile to Venus, however. That said, you've been going through this tension of Mars. Should I cut out of my child? Should I disenfranchise my child? Should I cut away from this love and sexual romantic relationship? Do it strategically with the guidance of an ally, Athena, friend with guidance, uh, lawyerly, strategic, wise mind helping you. And the other tension that's been ongoing for quite a while is Saturn is in opposition to Juno, the goddess of marriage in the house of legal marriage and churches and foreign shores and lands. And a lot of Capricorns may be looking at this energy of, do I want to stay or go in a long-term committed foreign love story or uh, to connections to a ch your children that have been uh, weakened somehow. And maybe you might even want to look at this as this beautiful mystic rectangle is asking for some serious breakthroughs because that's Uranus energy in how you approach your children, how you approach your romantic and sexual life, because there's a lot of love from Venus and that sextile to say long-term committed partnerships can be resolved into a very harmonious binding. And it could even lead to a desire to commit to marriage or legal agreements around relationships. So hold that thought. I need water. I'm going to get up with my little shorts on. I'll be right back. So, you know, resistance. Saturn is resistance to something to do with legal contracts and marriage or agreements and vows illegally. And it can involve children, it can involve entrepreneurial endeavors, and it can involve love and romance. And this is all being tidily resolved up and you're fixing uh, it up nicely. And I, do, I would say also, because of other stories that can be happening here, uh, sibling relationship tensions can be resolved. Situations with um, allies and benefactors can be coming to fruition in positive ways. People who wish to help you out so you can achieve some greater gains in your career, but usually connected to agreements with foreign entities or foreign shores from the place of your birth. 
certainly with Jupiter in your sixth house of work flowing to Pluto in your second, during the time of this mystic rectangle, a lot of you are getting a really good work opportunity or career opportunity emerging that looks quite financially successful. All right, I am Aquarius. I am one of you. We are having the movement of Mars through our fourth house. I gave me myself an example earlier of how to parse this. I'll be doing a separate video on Mars through the signs for each rising sign. What it means, it's more specifically. Today's video focuses on the mystic rectangle because it's exciting on July 5th, 6th. I probably won't have time to cover it in too much depth. I'll be traveling throughout Europe, but I would later on. So let's grab this opportunity now to really sit with it. We are Plutonian. We are powered up by power. We are Pluto power. We are the ones that carry the, carry the, the daunting Pluto energy for the world, us Aquarians. I can't get my eye off Pluto, can you? Now, bottom line is that we would make this rectangle look like where are we coming into some harmonious solution that's sudden and exciting regarding wanting to move our home, change our home, renovate our home. And we're dealing with issues of strategy because our career depends on our home here. So home and career matters have been unresolved and tense as well as contractual business and agreements and tax matters against the earnings savings story, earning savings resources, and you've been not either constrained or saving hard or trying your best to make structures for that. Like I talked about my incorporation lately. Now the freaking government decides to tax corporations at 75% capital gains just after I incorporate. Yeah. So this tension here is being resolved in a nice little bow regarding money that you share with a bank and mortgages and your significant other versus the savings and earnings type of vibe, as well as career uh, strategic decisions and actions you wish to make, Athena in the 10th house, as well as connected to the way you wish to suddenly operate in your home. And this looks like with the flow to Venus, a lot of you are going to have lucky opportunities, not only in the work story, coming through the sky around July the 6th, but also maybe rental con contracts and agreements. So some of you may forge a new agreements around property to rent, but also to buy and sell because of Juno in your eighth house. So buying, selling, and renting property are a major theme around July the 5th. And it feels like a sweet nectar of goodness descending upon you. And you feel really blessed by this whole energy. And Jupiter's in your fifth house of lottery wins, so go ahead and play. Know your limit, play within it. But <sighs> Mars, Uranus are making some exciting uh, real estate, unexpected development, and Algol is a well star when it's not producing corpses. And Jupiter is the gains of that energy, and that is the lottery win house. So maybe some of us, I'm I'm in a lottery draw called the, uh, for the Vancouver Hospital here, and it's a real estate property law draw. You get to keep the money if you don't want the property, but the gist is there. So wish me luck, everyone. I'm I'm hoping for all of us Aquarians, we can get some financial good luck. Jupiter connected to home and property things that this real estate that this mystic rectangle is opening up for, whether it's rentals, uh, refinancing, purchase and sale, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign. I cannot believe I got this video done. I, I do not mind my work, guys. I just have two clients, two videos, and a Zoom meeting today, and I got up at 6 a.m., so I'm just... It's already after 5 p.m. in Vancouver. So bear with me, please. Thanks. Pisces, sun, moon, and rising. So Mars is moving through Taurus, as he does every two years. And uh, this time around, you know, July 5th, a few days before and after, some tension that's been unresolved comes to a beautiful completion and ending of res a resolution between things to do with travel, online world, siblings, extended family and cousins, and Mars opposite Athena, who is all about strategic matters to do with ninth house themes. Now, this could be tension between skills-based learning and academia, writing and publishing, uh, siblings and a father figure, um, short distance travel versus long distance travel, like far, far away. Okay. These are there in the sky. And the other angle of tension is Juno in your marriage, house of marriage, goddess of marriage, divorce and marriage. She can do both sides of it in the marriage house, opposite Saturn, 
you are hard, constrained, realistic, and sober-minded, and you're looking across at the house of marriage with the goddess of marriage here. Maybe some of the questions are, is this sustainable? Can this go the distance? How do I feel about it? And this is also coming to a resolution. Now, you know, Athena is in the house of courts and legal matters, and this is divorce as well. So you may be seeking divorce counsel, divorce guidance at this time, or your partner maybe, but also you're looking at Mars who likes to change it up. And it's a change of neighbors and neighborhood at a very practical level ongoing in the month of July, but coming to a resolution in a beautiful way around the 5th of July. And this can literally be contracts and resolutions around neighbor, neighbor situations, like hardships legally with them, but also maybe you're going to move to a new neighborhood. And this is an exciting new beginning forming here. And um, with Jupiter in the fourth house and Mercury in the house of rentals, you may rent a property out as well. And you may also lease a property or be a landlord of a property and have something very positive happen at the time this mystic, mystic rectangle is in formation. You are serious, realistic, and you are responsible. You are acting like Saturn. And you will look across the way at this business and marriage partnership energy with a very realistic eye. And so again, some of you may seek legal advice regarding a difficult business contract or relationship agreement and be willing to cut it away. But if you're going to keep it, right, which you may, then you need to draw support from Venus and that is in the house of sexuality. And a relationship that's lagging and flagging needs a jumpstart in the romance in order for you not to want to legally break the deal. So how can you do that? That's a whole personal reading. But some of you may be dealing with that question of that relationship flagging uh, on the joy, enjoyment, pleasure front. If you're single and you want to start a new relationship under this mystic rectangle, it could actually work and bring a long lasting enduring contract for love with a flow to the house of romance. But um, it's up to you. It could work actually. Okay. Starting dating someone under this influence could be quite okay. Um, but it just really does speak to me of agreements to commit and keep with it and not give it up flowing to Venus in the house of joy and sexual romantic love. All right. Thanks for listening. I hope Pisces sun, moon and rising. That's helpful. Helps you make decisions about your life. Maybe time your life a little bit better. I am going to go off and buy myself a bubbly rosé and sit on my sun deck and decompress from a day that was way too long. <laughs> I'm reading a book called The 4-Hour Workweek or something. It's been a New York Times bestseller. I found it in a book bin in my neighborhood. <clears throat> I've really got to figure this out. So if anyone in the comments is still listening and you have advice for me, I know how to scale a business, okay? It's not that, it's not the problem. It's which part of my business to, to focus on and which ones to let go. But if you've ever been an entrepreneur and your business is growing so big and so fast and you're overwhelmed, I finally started hiring people to help me and you have some advice for me, I would love to hear from you how you hack this time energy expenditure. Because when you're an entrepreneur, you never turn it off. You go to bed, you're checking your, I have I'm my own customer service rep. People's payment didn't go through, they can't figure out what the thing they bought is. I'm flagging customer service, <laughs> but I'm not big enough to hire a real staff. You see what I'm saying? So I'm in, I'm in the, I'm in the limbo of the in-between. I'd love some guidance for entrepreneurs who figured this strategy out, who are ahead of me in this story. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate that. If you do want to comment or even just message me on my platform, my contact form is on my website, lunatic astrology. Thank you very much. Or it's email me. Um, my contact email is available on YouTube as well in my about section. Um, any guidance you have for me, I really would appreciate it because if you've figured out something I haven't, I'd love to know. Okay, bye-bye. Big hugs, everybody.